All right, for the second straight week, the Huskers give up uh, over 50 points, but early on at Penn State, it was Nebraska forcing a turnover, kicking a field goal, then taking advantage of a short field and getting a touchdown run from Devino Zigbo, and Nebraska's up after nine minutes, and you're thinking, hey, maybe they can get something going on the road here, right, Greg? Yeah, the, the start was one of our better starts in recent weeks where the first quarters have just been disastrous for Nebraska, but it was Penn State that was making the early mistakes, the punt that hit the young man's leg, and Nebraska got the short field, and, and you thought, okay, there's some hope for this thing. Uh, you know, But then you know, the second quarter came, and everything yeah. just caved, it caved in from that point on. But, yeah, you liked the start on the road. You felt like you gave yourself a chance. In fact, Matt and I were visiting during one of the commercial breaks, like, okay, we may be in this thing today, and then before you know it, 30 minutes later, it's basically over. Six straight three and outs for the Husker offense while Penn State is scoring on five straight touchdown drives. That's pretty much the game right there. Yeah, and just big chunks of yards. every play. I think they averaged you know, almost seven, eight yards per play. Maybe it was nine yards per play. It was just the defense had no answers for Penn State. And you, you knew it was going to be a big challenge going in because mm-hmm. Barkley and McSorley are so good. And, you know, Barkley – Barkley uh, uh, only had uh, three carries in the second half. Yeah. They sort of doesn't play the fourth quarter. That's how good they were because they were able to put this thing away in the first couple of quarters. That they're everything that, that you would think they were going to be. And defensively, they had Nebraska off their plan. They were aggressive. Uh, Nebraska again couldn't get a running game going in this one, and it was just a really disappointing second quarter. After you had some hope in that first period and. You know, then you're worried about whether the roof was going to cave mm-hmm. in because it's wet, and cold, and you're down to a top 10 team by 32 points at the half. And to the Huskers' credit, they did fight through that second half. And that's the impressive thing. And people can make the argument that it's cosmetic and maybe you're not going against the first string defense. But we're talking about touchdown drives of 75, 79, 90, 95 yards. Four out of those five touchdown drives were very, very impressive touchdown drives. They were, you know, but as I look back at this season, Jeff, the two best halves of football that Nebraska played were the second half at Oregon Mm -hmm. and the second half at Penn State when the games were basically decided. And, and, hey, I I give our guys credit that they didn't quit, but the other teams know they've got the game won, and so their intensity level drops down, and they're not as fiery. And, and, you know, while you, you tip your cap and say, guys, thanks for the effort, we appreciate it, you, you shouldn't get yourself in a position where you're that far down at halftime to anybody. Nebraska should be better than that. And then, so that's, you know, you feel weird walking out of the stadium. We're like, well, on one hand, you like what you guys did and hung in there, but the other hand, it was, it was over by halftime. So now you got Iowa coming in on Friday for the regular season finale the game. You can hear at 3 on ESPN 99.1. It's the Hy-Vee Heroes game. I don't know what to expect in this game, Greg, because... <laughs> You know, this is a, an Iowa team that, of course, beat Ohio State. And then what's happened to the Hawkeyes since? Yeah, you know, I, I, as I've studied them throughout the year, they they lost two starting offensive linemen early in the season, two senior offensive linemen, guys that have played a lot of football for them. So they have a redshirt tackle and a true freshman tackle. So And, and they've just not been able to run the football very consistently. They're 12th in the conference running the football, yeah. which is just unheard of for Iowa. And Rask is 13th, by the way, mm-hmm. but... So you got two of the worst rushing teams in the country, and yet they they have played some of their best games against the best teams that they've played. I mean, the Penn State game goes down to the final snap where they get beat on a throw into the end zone, last play of the game, and then they just rout Ohio State. So they've had they've been a hard bunch to figure out. I talked to Kirk Ferentz earlier in the week, and I said, "Coach, would uneven be a good word?" He said, "Yeah, that's probably as good as any." And, you know, he said, I'm proud of a guy's efforts. We've shown we can be a good football team at times, but we're just not consistent enough week in and week out. So going back to your question, you're right. I don't know what to expect in this game because you got one team in Nebraska who's not bowl eligible, another team in Iowa that's been disappointed in their year, and they might be playing for bowl pecking order, so maybe that gives them some motivation. So this one's a hard one to get a finger on. Well, and frankly, the Hawkeyes are going to have to win with their defense because in five of their last seven games, they've scored 17 points or less. They just don't add a lot of points on the board generally. And then you see the 55 they put up against Ohio. Yeah. Like, well, where did that come from? So it's it's bizarre. Now, they've, you know, they've had Nebraska's number. They've won three of the last mm-hmm. four games in this series. And last year they scored 40 points when we didn't think they were going to be capable of doing much offensively. So they've kind of had Nebraska numbered. Now, it's a different defense that the Oscars are facing, but 
statistically, this is a poorer defense for Nebraska than it was last year when Mark Banker was the coordinator. So, you know, does the 3-4 give him a different look? Maybe. Uh, but uh, I anticipate Iowa to at least come in and, you know, they're going to play hard and they're going to play physical. And can Nebraska slow down their running game? I don't know. Nebraska hasn't slowed many people down here in the last month. It'd be interesting to see with the interception battle. Of course, Tanner Lee has gotten that interception thing under control again for the time being, but this is a uh, Iowa defense that leads the Big Ten in interceptions. Sure does. Josh Jackson, what a story. Uh, Thorpe finalist for them, seven picks on the year, two of them that he's returned for touchdowns. He's really stepped in there and replaced Desmond King, who was so good for them the last couple years in that defensive backfield. So he's done a really good job. And, you know, Nate Stanley, the quarterback for Iowa, uh, a lot of people said Kirk was, Kirk Ferentz was playing, uh, was not uh, being totally forthright with people all summer long. And he said, oh, the quarterback battle's up in the air. Clearly it's been Stanley. Mm -hmm. He's played the whole season for them. And it's been really good. His touchdown to interception ratio is terrific. Uh, he's done a great job avoiding mistakes. And it's made good throws down in the red zone for them. So, yeah, it, I mean, can Tanner Lee avoid the mistakes against this really opportunistic secondary? That's going to be one of the big keys in this game. And you got uh, a guy on the uh, opposing defense with a guy with a big chip on his shoulder, Josie Jewell, really upset. A lot of people in Iowa City very upset that he did not get nominated for the Butkus Award. He might be my favorite player in the league to watch play. Just love watching his hunger his desire. He's all over the football field. 117 tackles on the year for Josie Jewell and not a Butkus finalist. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, that, that kid lays it out on the line uh, every snap of the game. Going back to when they played Penn State back in late September, it was like him and Saquon Barkley always butting heads, and that was a terrific battle uh, that night at Kinnick Stadium in, in Iowa City. Now, they're 6-5. and five. Jeff, but they've played one of the top ten toughest schedules mm -hmm. in the country this year. When you go back and they played Ohio State and they played Penn State, they, played, they won at Iowa State, who's had a tremendous year in the Big 12 Conference. So they've certainly been tested throughout the year. And, and uh, you know, Nebraska won't be able to show them really anything they haven't seen throughout the year. All right, so for those 22 seniors that are going to put on a Husker uniform for the final time on Friday afternoon, what is their legacy going to be, this class of what will be the class of 2018, I suppose? What, what will we look back and think about this group? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, it's a, it's a it's a group that had to that went through a coaching change. Yep. I mean, that they all most are, they all arrived with with Bo Pelini and that staff in charge of things in Lincoln. Uh, then they played three years for for Mike Riley, so most of their playing time came under Coach Riley and this staff. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not really sure what their legacy is going to be. It's probably not going to be a real good one, to be honest, because. Two of the three years where they would have played prime roles, this team didn't hit 500. Uh, five and five and seven two years ago, and and either four and eight or five and seven this year. It's going to be a group that probably won't won't have a lot of remembrances about it. There's, it's not a star-studded group. You have some hard-nosed players like Chris Weber and Joshua Kalu and Chris Jones on the defense, and offensively, probably the biggest star on that side of the ball that's graduating is the Mornay Pearsonell, who's been good, but never really lived up the the promise that you saw in that freshman year where he brought back all those kicks for touchdowns and just has not been able to recreate that magic since. So I'm not really sure that this will be a class that will be uh, remembered for a whole lot, to be honest with you. Has there been any public discussion at all about anybody acknowledging the fact that this will probably be Mike Riley's final game as Nebraska's head coach? No, and, and I, I interviewed Bill Moose, the athletic director, on Monday. And, you know, he is staying with the, the fact that he is – still evaluating this program, that he's had several conversations with Mike Roddy, that everybody's disappointed with the way this season is going. So he's really done a nice job. He's backed up what he said, even though the public pressure has been to make a move the last couple of weeks. As Husker fans sit there and they watch Florida dismiss their coach a few weeks ago, and UCLA yeah. dismissed their coach over the weekend. But Bill Moose has been steadfast, and I'm not going to do that. That doesn't serve any purpose. Um, so, uh, you know, I... I think the general feeling, Jeff, is is that there was going to be a change for Husker football. I, I think I would be surprised if there wasn't. Uh, but to Bill Moose's credit, he is playing this close to the vest and living up to what he said when he first got hired is that he does not believe in firing coaches midstream. And so um, my guess is, and my advice to Husker fans, just to keep your ear to the ground <laughs> this weekend because I think something probably would happen.